Thank you, State of Survival, for sponsoring this video and helping to make what we do possible. Small space design can give us true creative license. It can be an opportunity to try something that we wouldn't dare risk doing on a larger structure. And here we're about to explore an incredible place that has created some wonderful experimental structures to be used as unique accommodation. Hi Stace, how's it going? Kia ora Ras, good to see you. It's great to see you and I am especially excited to see this incredible creation of yours. <laughs> yeah, it's been um, a little while in the making, we're excited to show you around. <laughs> yeah, so this property that we're on right now, this is a really special place isn't it? Can you tell me a little bit about what this place is and how it came to be? I guess for years I'd always wanted to run a hostel or something like that and then as I got a bit older and got more interested in things like permaculture and sustainability, natural building, yoga, all these things kind of all came together and we wanted to create a place for travellers and people even locally to come out and spend some time in nature and showcase different ways of building and ways of working with the environment but still creating unique spaces. So ever since I met Stace, she introduced me to this idea of creating this beautiful place where people could meet and stay and yeah, I was completely sold. So like, so sold that I promised Stace and at this stage it was like probably our first date <laughs> that I was going to be there to lay the first stone. And I did. <laughs> I did. And look at us now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So this is a treehouse pirate ship. How on earth did you come up with the idea of hoisting an old boat into a tree? <laughs> um, it's funny actually, it's been a dream of mine since I was about 15 to live in a pirate ship treehouse. <laughs> Um, it's a great dream. Yeah, I don't even know exactly where the idea first came from. I've just always been obsessed with tree houses and always obsessed with pirate ships. So. <laughs> so tell me how this actually came about. How did you actually construct this? So we actually found the hull on Trade Me and it was a lot different to what it is now. It was sort of just an empty hull. Didn't have any of the back area or anything. And my friend Brenton brought it down from Walkworth and he's a qualified builder so he helped us out like doing all the little bits and pieces. Yeah. Because <laughs> this was actually originally a 150 year old Cornish sailing boat wasn't it? Yeah that's right. They used to sail between Auckland and Melbourne and it was deemed not seaworthy anymore and so we thought why not give it a second life in a tree? <laughs> it's not seaworthy so let's just hoist it up in the trees. I love that logic. Yeah. So what size is the tree house? Uh, it's roughly 12 square metres on the inside. You have definitely nailed the pirate ship <laughs> aesthetic on this one. Can you tell me a little bit about all of these cool artistic features that you've added onto it? Yeah, so um, we wanted to go with the, the red stripe and the black to kind of make it piratey. The mast, it was a funny story, one of the builders who was working on it with us actually found it on the side of the road over on Waiheke Island. No way. <laughs> and brought it back for us. So. And you've got the crow's nest and everything up there. Yeah, an old wine barrel um, that became the crow's nest. And I really wanted to have a spiral staircase as well. And we tried for so long to find someone trade me and nothing. And then I was coming back for a surf one day in Murawai. And as I was thinking about it, I look over and there's a spiral staircase in someone's driveway. No way. <laughs> yeah. So I go and knock on his door and he's not home so I leave him a creepy little note like, can I, can I buy your stairs? <laughs> <laughs> I love it when those things happen. And the carving that was made for the front of the boat is just beautiful. Yeah, so the carving's actually um, a homage to Hine Moana, which is a Māori god of the sea and that's what we've named the boat. Very nice. Well, the pirate ship just looks ridiculously cool and I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Should we check it out? For sure. All right. So tell me about this door that you've created because there's a lot of art on that as well, isn't there? Yeah, so um, this was really quite fun to build. We actually used an old ship's wheel and then made it so that when you turn it to the right, it opens the door. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, this is incredible. 
Yeah, so many little pirate touches there. <laughs> there really are. You must have had the time of your life searching out all these cool little trinkets. It definitely was a lot of fun for sure. Like even down to finding all the little portholes and there's a barometer up here. This light was actually salvaged from an old Bangladesh fishing boat. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah, and um, a lot of the old windows and stuff are all reclaimed. All of the little touches, the windows, everything. All of this timber was reclaimed and we just painted um, a little bit of dry paint on it and then grinded it back to get these effects. Fantastic. Yeah. It's always so nice to see materials be reused and reclaimed, but then especially cool to see this kind of combination of architecture and just absolute art. Yeah, we were so lucky to have a team that were um, just as obsessed with pirates as I am <laughs> and keen to play around with all these recycled timbers and stuff. You know, the whole premise of Tanglewood is to use either natural or recycled materials, so wherever possible we do that. And personally, I think you get a better effect in the end as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so this here is kind of the hangout space and dining table of the ship? Yeah. My dad actually had this old map from a while ago, um, and we were looking for something to use for the table. And our friend Brenton actually built this table um, from scratch and added in the little map underneath. So it's kind of a cool little touch. We've had about 10 people sit quite comfortably around this table. So it's the perfect spot for a little pirate party and a couple of rums. <laughs> yeah, and no doubt somewhere here you've got a little hideaway somewhere for the rum. Yeah, we do have a secret little um, rum stash spot down here. Nice. <laughs> Good to see. <laughs> you've got the skull and crossbones on there and everything. <laughs> yeah. And right down to even the skull that you've got there on the back of the seat. And that's actually a bottle opener, isn't it? Yeah, it comes in handy sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure it does. And then through here we have the cabin. Yeah, cozy little cabin. Come check it out. This is super cozy. <laughs> oh my gosh, you must have had so much fun creating this. Yeah, it's such a beautiful space. We're really proud of it. My partner Ricardo spent ages recladding all this area um, with native coldy. It's a little bit tricky working to curves, but um, they managed to do a really good job, I think. He certainly did. <laughs> and you've got the skylight over the bed and everything? Yeah, we wanted people to be able to look up and um, see the stars and really feel like they're in a boat while they're staying here. <laughs> and so can you actually get access to the deck above? Yeah, you can. So you can go up there to check if there's any other pirate ships coming along. <laughs> Super cool. And just in case anyone forgot to bring their pirate costumes, we have a little dress up box at the end of the bed. <laughs> well, lucky that you do, because I actually forgot my pirate outfit today. So. Oh, perfect. We'll have to get you a bandana later on. <laughs> we are going to have to do that. So here at Tanglewood, you've actually got multiple structures and they're all unique and all quirky. What are we going to see next? Should we go check out the Aroha Cove House? Let's go check <laughs> it out. And so tell me a little bit about what you've created here with the Cobb House. We absolutely love this building. So we actually ran a workshop where we had 30 people on site for 30 days that helped us create this. Very um, cool. Yeah, and we built the Cobb walls all by hand and that together. One of the things with earth building is that it's so incredibly labor intensive. And for that reason, it's so good to do it in a workshop so you can have so many people come together to make it light work, eh? Absolutely. It makes it so much more fun as well when you're all there together and you can see the visual progress each day, you know? Yeah. It actually took us about a year to finish the whole thing, but it was great to have a team on board for that 30 days to really get the bulk of the walls up. Now this door really is an incredible feature piece. Can you talk to me about this? Oh, we were so lucky to find this. So um, I was just scrolling through Trade Me trying to find an interesting door that would do you know, this building justice. And then this pops up and I'm like, it looks like a Hobbit door or something. It looks like it's from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, it was just from a um, timber recyclers down in the South Island and I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> and I see on this house, you've actually built a copper roof. That is incredibly luxurious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did end up blowing the budget a little bit, <laughs> to be honest. I'm sure it did. The thinking behind the copper is that it'll last 150 years. So we thought, Building something to last was, you know, the most sustainable option that we could choose. So. And then I see you're collecting rainwater on this one as well? Yeah, so we've actually um, used an old copper hot water cylinder as a tank, just put it on its side, just catching some of the rainwater and then that feeds down into the little basin inside the cob house. Very cool. Yeah. So what size is the cottage? Uh, it's about 25 square metres all up, including the mezzanine. 
Yeah, I really love what you've done here with all of the artwork and even the name of the cottage right there along the top. Yeah, it's so cool working with Cobb, all of the different like little relief works and stuff you can put into it. <laughs> sure is. Well, can we have a look inside and see what you've done there? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh my gosh, look at that floor. <laughs> Yeah, so with the floor, we actually had to lay the floor a couple of times, um, which was a bit of a shame. So what happened was we had some pumice underneath the floor, but unfortunately the, the pumice had a little bit of moisture in it. So it didn't work as the best insulation, unfortunately. It caused the floor to bow. Oh no. But when we decided to relay it again for the final time, we thought, why not incorporate this design into it? and in the original plans, we used the flower of life to figure out the measurements of where everything would go um, using, you know, sacred geometry. So we thought, why not put it in the floor itself? That is such a beautiful idea. Now over here as well, you've created this beautiful little kitchenette. Talk to me about this. Yeah, so um, this was an old um, butcher's block that I found at an op shop. We just added these little wings and added the sink. And then talk to me about the Tadillac behind the butcher's block there. Yeah, so um, one of the guys that helped us with the lime plastering on the outside um, is actually an amazing Tadillac expert. So he wanted to sort of show everyone how to do it and this was a perfect little place to practice. And then we've got the really nice seating area here and a super comfortable looking couch. Yeah, so um, we've got a little sort of hangout area here. Um, the couch folds out so we can sleep up to four in here, which is really handy for families and things like that. Yeah, so this is yeah. a sleeping loft above us here as well? Yeah, so we've got a really comfy Super King bed up there. We built this balustrade as well. My partner Ricardo went around foraging a bunch of trees that had fallen down in a storm and created this little nest. <laughs> Beautiful. It does look like a nest, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's really lovely. And then a gorgeous ladder that you built to access the loft as well. Yeah, so um, our friend Dylan from Treehouse Masters was visiting. Um, actually, we met him through you. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Yeah, and um, he built that beautiful staircase for us. And yeah, we absolutely love it. So It's wonderful. So in the pirate ship and in the cob house here, neither of these has a proper kitchen or bathroom. Can you talk to me about what you've created here in terms of communal infrastructure? Yeah, so the idea being that, um, you know, we don't necessarily need to build multiple bathroom areas and kitchen areas because we've only really got like three or four little places for people to stay. So we thought it much nicer to everyone to have a shared kitchen area and then a shared shower and um, toilet area. With the kitchen, we took an old shed and sort of refurbished it using all reclaimed timber and um, reclaimed furniture and things like that, which most of it I found at the dump. <laughs> The macrocarpa bench that's in there was actually already a part of the wall in the shed and it was completely wasted just as like, you know, along the side of the wall. So we pulled it down and sanded it back and created the bench top. We wanted to have it nice and open plan and yeah, quite a communal space for people to hang out. The coffee machine was an absolute must have. Uh, my partner Ricardo is Italian and he wouldn't say no to a nice coffee machine. Italians have got to have their coffee machines. <laughs> Yeah. And then talk to me about what you've done with the bathroom block. Yeah, so we wanted to create um, a really beautiful bathroom block for um, everyone to share. And we wanted to use composting toilets. I just think it's crazy that we pump our waste into a perfect water supply. Yeah, we don't have any problems in terms of smell or anything like that. And then we know that everything goes back into the earth eventually and zero waste. So. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's beautifully built as well. I see that on the bathroom block, you've got all of those wonderful brass features and everything. Yeah, I actually found those traveling in Bali and I thought we need to have these mermaids on the doors and then we built the doors to fit them. <laughs> and all the tiles were seconds from various like tile warehouses and um, a place up the road in Wellsford that makes them. And yeah, we took inspiration from Hunter Vasa for the crazy tile patterns and stuff. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> And then there's one other place for us to look at here, isn't there? Yeah, so we've got um, the beautiful potting shed cabin as well, which is um, a cosy little cabin overlooking the valley. Beautiful, let's go check that one out. So this next structure, was this actually created from an old potting shed? Uh, no, so the, um, the name the potting shed actually draws inspiration from this place in 
Oregon called McMinimums. Right. Yeah, my, um, my father used to go there quite a lot and absolutely loved it. They had an old shed sort of similar to this where they used to pot all the plants and it had been repurposed into a little sort of whiskey and cigar bar. Nice. And oh my gosh, this area is so cool. You've got the big outdoor fire, pizza oven, even an outdoor bathtub. <laughs> Look at that. It's so good for groups and like, especially in summer, coming out here with the sunset. But even in winter, you know, you can get cozy with the fire and the wood fired hot tub. So yeah, it's a beautiful sunset spot. So what size is the cabin here? It's just under 10 square meters. Yeah, we love the cozy little size of it. It's great, especially in winter with the fire on. Got a little wood, uh, wood burner in the corner and a little queen size bed. And it's just a lovely little space for a couple to get away. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And now this one has its own outdoor toilet and shower, doesn't it? Yeah, so um, it's quite nice. Like you can use the communal facilities if you want, but often people want to get away and just kind of get back to nature. And so we have um, a beautiful outdoor shower just around the back and then a little long drop just behind it as well. So Very cool. So you've done some really unique and interesting projects here. Can you talk to me a little bit about the budget that was involved in realizing all of this crazy cool stuff <laughs> that you've built here? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the, the pirate ship, I'd say it would probably be our cheapest project. Um, that was 30k all up. The cob house was more expensive. A lot to do with the fact that we did put that copper roof on it. <laughs> copper roofs are insanely expensive. Yeah. yeah. So it was about 80 before the roof and then, yeah, about 115, I think, in the end um, with all the little finishing touches and the copper roof and everything. Right. Yeah, um, the potting shed here, most of the building was already here, so we put the copper roof on top and just re-insulated, um, and that came to about 20. Yeah. Wow, that's a fantastic <laughs> result. Now, Tanglewood really feels like a place that is ever going to be changing and evolving. What's your next project? So we've been doing a, a lot of planting around the place. Um, we really want to regenerate the native forest. Um, so for every booking that we have here at Tanglewood, we plant a native tree. And we've planted almost 4,000 trees already, so yeah. Wow. Can't wait to see what this place is going to look like, you know, in 10, 20 years. That is going to be super exciting. Yeah. In terms of buildings as well, um, over lockdown, we just purchased a 63 Bedford bus. Nice. That we're super excited to um, create into another self-contained accommodation. So it'll be cool to see that come to life as well. It's quite surreal sometimes, actually, to think about it, you know, it's only been two and a half years since we arrived and started building and yeah, it's one of those things that even though it was this lifelong dream, I never quite imagined getting to where we are now. We couldn't have dreamed for a better place to call home and a mm. better project to work on day to day. This place just brings me a lot of joy. Every single accommodation, it's a, it's a little art piece and it's all sort of memories, so it's a storybook basically and you, every time I walk around it's like, you know, going back to that page mm -hmm. and now you can actually sit back and, you know, stare at the cop house and just, just be proud and happy and... See it comes to life. So. See it comes to life and like, yeah. that's something for us, yeah, that's, that's a yeah. lot. We consider ourselves kind of guardians of the land here, Kaitiaki, and we just want to make sure that we leave it as beautiful as we can for future yeah. generations. Well, Stace, you are creating such a magical space here. I think what you're doing, especially with things like the tree planting, is just so cool. And no doubt in 10 years, this place is going to be even more remarkable. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. No worries. Thank you, Rice. For me, this place is an incredible reminder that architecture isn't supposed to be stale and stuffy. It's supposed to be fun and adventurous and experimental. Here they have dared to do things that I have never seen done before and it has paid off big time. This place really is something incredibly special. Thank you State of Survival for sponsoring this video and helping to make what we do possible. 2020 has already got off to a really crazy start, and who knows what the year is going to throw at us next. Some people are saying that it might be zombies, and they just could be right. 
State of Survival is a zombie-themed survival strategy mobile game. The game is free to play, has loads of fun in-game events and rewards, there's no restriction on time or location to play, and best of all, you get to fight zombies. Lots and lots of zombies. With the zombie apocalypse brought on by a deadly weapon, you, as a survivor of the disaster, are expected to rebuild your home, fight against the enemy, and eventually save humankind from darkness. You can download State of Survival using the link below or in the video description. Use my creator code LIVINGSOS to redeem an in-game pack that'll help to get you thriving in the zombie apocalypse. The starter pack is for new users only and the numbers are limited, so first come, first served. Plus, if you download State of Survival now using my link, you'll also enter a giveaway with a chance to win one of 25 $50 Amazon gift cards. So hit the link and download the game now to make sure you're ready for the zombies.